This station, in cooperation with the Federal Civil Defense Administration, brings you by transcription, This is Civil Defense. part of the country, we're pretty much cut off from everything. Gets mighty lonesome on the ranch sometimes, what with both the boys in the armed forces and just Agnes and me to keep each other company. It's times like that you get a lot of comfort out of listening for familiar sounds like, like the occasional jingle of the party line, or the faint sound of the cattle out the winter pasture. And every night at seven, Ag calls out from the kitchen where she's doing the dishes. Sam? Isn't it about time for the newscast? Uh, pretty quick now. I'll turn the set on. Do you suppose we'll ever have television out this way, Sam? Not very likely. We, we're in a pocket here in the mountains. There's something about the waves not getting through. Radio's different somehow. And now for the news. First, the weather. Heavy snow is forecast for the lower plain area in the state tonight with below zero temperatures in the mountains. The heavy blizzard that has been raging in the Summit Peak area is blowing itself out, but considerable loss of livestock is expected. That's us. Meanwhile, on the Korean front, bloody fighting raged. Losses on both sides were heavy, as the bitterly contested Ridge 207 changed hands twice in the last 24 hours. We haven't heard from Kit for three weeks. I wonder if... Nonsense, Mother. He's all right. We'd have had word if anything was wrong. Curry is such a long way off. No place is very far away these days. Too close for comfort, I'd say, especially Russia. And from Indochina comes news that communist forces have captured the town. Turn it off. Oh, but why? Please turn it off. Ah, okay, Ag. But there's some good programs tonight. Glad I don't have to be out tonight. I wish nobody had to be out. Do you suppose it's like this in Korea? Oh, now, Mother, it's all right, I tell you. <sighs> Glad I put out plenty of hay for the cattle. The drifts are going to be too deep to move around much. Listen, isn't that the night plane? It sounds like it. The storm is breaking up pretty fast, but I'll bet it's awful rough up there. your seatbelts, please. Can I help you with the baby? No. No, thank you. I'll be all right. We'll be landing in just a few minutes. Oh, excuse me. That's the captain. I'll be right back. Hello, Tower. This is Flight 64, position approximately 45 miles west of your field on west leg of Summit Radio Range. Request landing instructions, please. Roger. Flight 64. You are number one to land runway 30 ceiling 500 feet, visibility one mile with snow flurries in the area. Give us a call over the high cone. Roger. Did you want me, Joe? Oh, yeah. How are things back there, Pat? Pretty good. A couple cases of air sickness. Well, keep them quiet because it's going to get rougher. I'm going to start letting down in about 30 seconds. Will do, Joe. I'll be glad when we get in. This trip's been a rough one. Listen, I thought I... Mother, look quick. Up there against Summit Peak where the clouds are breaking up. Oh, Sam. That sheet of flame. What is it? Looks like it was the night plane. It must have crashed. Now, Agnes, I want you to remember exactly where you saw that flash. Get a bearing on it. I think I got one. But two are better than one. Maybe if we draw it on paper... We... Sam, what are you going to do? Call the sheriff. He'll have to get a rescue crew together. He won't be able to get up here for days. The roads are sure to be blocked with drift. I know it. He'll have to fly in. Hello, operator. Operator, get me the sheriff's office in Pinedale. Please, operator. I don't care if the line is tied up. This is a matter of life and death. All right, but hurry. Walt? Hello, Walt Lindgren? This is Sam Fisher. Listen, Walt, I think an airliner just crashed on Summit Peak. Yes, Ag and I both saw it. I heard it, too. 
Yes, you better get up here as soon as you can. Well, your new civil defense outfit can handle it. Now listen, I'll be right now. But Sam, Sam, you can't go out there. You'll get lost and freeze. Where'd you put my boots, Ag? Oh, here they are. Now listen, Agnes. I signed up in that civil defense outfit of Walt's, too. And I did it for any emergency, not just because we have two boys in the service, but that there might be a war. But this isn't a civil defense job, Sam. Yes, it is. Somebody's got to get up there to those people in that wreck. We're the only ones here who have the training to do it. Oh, help me with this doggone boot, will you, eh? This darn rheumatism. Oh, Sam, you can't go up there alone. Now, don't get excited, Ag. I don't intend to try. I couldn't do anything alone anyway. This will take teamwork, lots of people working together. That's what rescue work is. What I'm going to do now is get things ready for the teams, the doctors, nurses, and rescue crews. I don't understand. Better put on another sweater, Sam. What are you going to do? Get out the bulldozer and start clearing a landing strip in the pasture. I want to get it ready so Walt Lingren will have a place to land when he gets here. But it's still snowing. Oh, it can't last much longer, and that strip has to be ready. They can't get up here over the roads. They won't be able to for hours, maybe a whole day. They'll have to fly in, and this is the nearest place to the mountain a landing can be made. Will he come up tonight? Well, if the snow stops and the clouds clear away, he will. But he'll be here for daylight, sure. Won't it be dangerous, Sam? I mean, Walt and all those other people, they aren't professional pilots. Why, they're just ranchers and farmers. Well, you know what they say about those flying farmers. Twelve thousand of the best civilian flying experts in the country. And most of them have joined civil defense, too. This won't be the first time, or the hundred and first time, that a flying farmer has risked his neck to help out in an emergency. The least I can do is to go out and get a strip ready for them so they can land. Sam? Yes, Agnes? If the storm does clear up, he try to fly up here, won't he? He said he would. Well, he'll need lights to land by, to outline the landing strip, won't he? Of course he will. Well... I'm going to put them out, then. Oh, no, you're and not. And if you say one more word, I'll give you a lecture on women in civil defense. Wait for me. <laughs> yeah, well, an hour's sleep better than none, I guess. You wake, Walt. <clears throat> Yeah. They like that? Uh, we'll be in about half an hour. No, Agnes will get that phone. Better wake uh, the doc and his wife, I guess. Uh, she go along with us? She's a nurse, isn't she? Uh, yeah. Sam? Uh, what is it, Ag? Somebody just phoned. Five planes are headed this way with rescue equipment. Flying farmers and civil defense volunteers. Okay. We'll start out ahead, and they can follow when they land. Sam? You're not still going. Well, I know where the wreck of that plane is. Ready, Walt? Ready. We ought to be about there, near as I can figure. Yeah. <clears throat> Pack's getting kind of heavy. I hope we find something to, to take care of. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Everybody okay back there? Hey, Walt. Walt, look. Up there. Where? To the right. That's where she first hit the trees. Quiet, everybody. Look, Walt. There's a piece of the wing. Hello? Jim, you better buy a rifle. I don't think we're going to like what we see. Maybe war's a little like this. I don't know. And the fellas that come home from the real fighting don't like to talk. You find bodies, 
There are things you don't want to look at. A coat. Just a coat hanging onto a tree limb with nobody in it. Neat, like someone hung it there. Shoes scattered around. Shoes that don't match. Twisted metal, torn mail sacks. You can tell that this was the stewardess and this was a soldier getting his first leave in months, maybe. For two hours we searched in the fast disappearing hope that someone had survived and started down the mountain, maybe. But there was nothing. No sign of life. It began to look as if all our months of civil defense training and rescue work would not be used this time. Flying farmers in planes hovered overhead, ready to drop food, medicine, supplies if they were needed. They weren't. Well, Sam, I guess this is it. We might as well go on back. In a couple of days, maybe, we can bring weasels in, clear the wreckage, carry out the victims. Yeah. Well, that's life. Well, that's death. You know, Walt, you did a wonderful job of organizing a civil defense outfit here in the county. Too bad we didn't have a chance to help this time. But just the same, it's good to have. Hey, what's the matter? Thought I heard something cry. Bobcat, maybe. We'll still find a few of them. Sam, that's a baby. Oh, it can't be, Walt. No kid could possibly... Quick, over this way. My God, it is. Sam, it's a baby. And it's alive. Sam, is it about time for the news broadcast? Coming right up, Agnes. Korea? Yeah, finish the best part. Doggone that boy waiting until the last page to tell us coming home. <laughs> well, you'll have plenty to tell him, too, if you don't catch double pneumonia. The idea. A rescue worker at your age. Agnes, someday they made need folks like us. Bad. Folks with training, with knowledge, ready to take care of things. Mm. Pray God it may never come. But if it does, well, we're ready. Uh, How is your baby? Mm. The doc says it's going to live. Your best defense is civil defense. The next war, if it comes, will be total war. Civilians will be target number one. Learning now to save lives, to organize, is our best hope of survival. This program was brought to you by the Federal Civil Defense Administration, was written and directed by Jack Weir Lewis, and was produced and transcribed by the Rocky Mountain Radio Council. (laughs) 